Hey, it's Gavin here. If you're using Zapier and you want to use the webhooks to fetch data from another service to use in your Zap, then you're in the right place. I'm going to show you a few examples and then show you how to set that up in Zapier in just a few minutes. So let's jump right into it. So what I've done for this video is I've set up two very simple examples. So if you remember, I said that these aren't going to have any authentication. And in this case, I'm also using get requests. So get requests are usually simpler than post requests. So if you've seen some of my other videos, I'm just going to quickly rehash what those two are. So a get request is almost self-explanatory. You are essentially getting data. You use this type of webhook when you don't when you don't need to make any change in someone's system. But the system that you're integrating with, the API, they will tell you if it's a GET request or a POST request. So you don't have to guess. And if they are making you guess, then it's probably not the best API and they haven't documented very well and explained themselves very well. And a POST request is almost like you're sending mail. The name is quite appropriate as well. So a POST request is usually when we are including additional data. We're, in we're including a payload. And often we do this when we want to make a change in some system. We want to have an effect on some system. Either we send in new information to create a new object or send information for them to start a process or send information for them to do an update type of thing. So those are the differences between a GET and a POST request. And we're focused on GETs. So I'm just going to show you quickly two examples. So the first one, uh, they, both have, they both have the same setup. They just start off with a Google Sheets trigger. And then the second step, I have my webhook, which is using a GET request because I want to fetch information. So in this case, I just choose the webhooks app. I choose GET from the dropdown. And now what you'll see in the setup action, this is very straightforward. So I just found this uh, API on this website called, it's just a big free list of APIs. I literally just Googled free, free and open APIs with no authentication. And it was one of these on the list, just a great example. So I can show you what that looks like and then also what the information coming back looks like. So as you'll see here, all we really need to do is we put the URL in and in the second example, I'm going to show you, we're going to put some fields in here, which are called query parameters, but everything else we can leave blank for now because there's no authentication, which if there was, we might put something there, or we might put something in the headers, or we might even put an API key in the query string, in the query parameters. But in this case, it's literally just a simple URL, and we're saying we want to get information from that URL. So I'm going to quickly run that just to show what that looks like. I've already done it before, but I'm going to show it again. All I need to do is that. And you can see this comes back as a, a big list of different crypto rates. And this format is actually JSON. So I'm sure you've ran across this term. I'm just going to quickly show what that looks like. So if I run this as is, you'll see it comes back as this kind of strange data format, but this is what JSON is. And this is how most APIs send and receive information. And also Zapier understands it very well and knows how to format it and interact with it. So from this point with the response, we're obviously not gonna do it now, but you could handle these items as line items. You could put them all into a Google Sheet. You could do an action for each one. You can do various types of things with it. Now, the second example is at times with a GET request, you are going to need to use what I mentioned earlier of query parameters or query strings that has various names, but they're all kind of interchangeable. And in this case, again, I've just got a simple URL. I picked it from that same list. This is ageify. But in this situation, this accepts a bit of a variable. It lets me put in a bit of a value and say, I want something different to come back to me. But still, I'm not changing anything in their system. They're just giving me different information based on what I'm asking them. So in this case, they have a query parameter called name, and I can give it whatever it wants. And it essentially guesses uh, an age based on the name, just kind of looking at when names were most popular. And again, there's no uh, authentication required here. So let's use my own. Let's see how old they rate my, old, my own name is. So retest that action. 
and, <laughs> and apparently Gavin, the average age is 62 years old. I mean, unfortunately, hopefully I don't look 62 years old. But that is all there really is to it. So again, this was a simple example. I didn't show you how to handle those big JSON responses. I didn't show you how to interact if there's authentication required. That's going to be done in another video because the concepts would be the same for a GET and a POST request. So I wanted to do that in a, a single video rather. And um, if you found... And if you found this video useful, obviously I'd massively appreciate a quick thumbs up. It requires very little effort from you. And obviously it means my videos have a high chance of getting in front of more people like yourself who need a bit of help with Zapper, who are a bit confused by what all these different things mean and want to build cool Zaps that are going to save themselves time. And if you want to take that a step further, I've actually created a free guide called the Jumpstart Zapier Guide. And that is in the comments. So there's a link to that in the description. You can click through that. You get a free guide, no strings attached. And what I've included in that is basically what I feel is really the core things you need to know when getting started with Zapier, that if you don't know these things, you're going to be very confused. You're not quite sure why things work the way they do or how to set things up. And this is really going to clarify, in my opinion, those things that you need to know. So in the description, you can just go click through there get that free guide, and then I'd obviously love to hear your thoughts about it. So again, shoot me a quick thumbs up if you can, and then grab that free guide. It's really going to help you. Chat soon.